That's my way of saying that those thoughts wouldn't be so intense and those thoughts wouldn't be so common. So I think that's at least some progress. And in fact, I wasn't going to say this before the camera cut off. I have a plan to further improve the state of my mental health. I wanted to follow through with a plan which I'm currently in the process of developing. So in the past, I have um, appreciated and valued the idea of using the NHS depression and anxiety self-assessment quiz. I definitely have done it in the past and I've done that quite a few times, but it's not something that I've done regularly. In the past, I also used to do uh, videos in which I review the state of how I think my way of life is going as a whole, which would provide me significantly more information than um, the papers would. That's my way of saying journaling, when I write down my notes. I definitely do, um, I'm definitely okay with writing down notes and journaling, but I think I'd also be better off adding that layer on top in which I, on a weekly basis, would review how I think my way of life is going as a whole uh, via video, because that then more easily give uh, an idea as to how I truly think about things, because there's only so much that writing down notes can give, because you can't give expression, you can't give, tone of, uh, you can't produce expression or tone of voice as clearly as video can. I can attempt to remember how I would have thought about it sub vocally when looking at my notes, but uh, that I would have written down, but those expressions that I think of when I'd read over such notes again might not have been accurate in the way that I would have gone out my way to convey such notes in terms of how I think about it sub vocally when I was writing it down way back when, prior to reading it back, of course. So I definitely think that would help me out and I, if I would like, definitely could have 52 consistent weeks of reviewing the state of my mental health. Speaking of, this is another note that I wouldn't have otherwise uh, made note of, I don't think, and that's to do with positivity. So, as I was growing up, especially as a teen, I didn't feel positive. I felt angry. I felt angry at the idea that my parents didn't like the idea of me doing or didn't give me a chance in my mind to work and do school at the same time and from that I have permanently or at least up to the present day have not felt happy with being around them and it seemed as though the interactions based on that topic stemmed a, a, an unhealthy relationship between me and my parents and as far as I'm concerned it seems as though the relationship is definitely still active but dead to me, I'd say. That's my way of saying that I just don't like it. I don't like being so close to them because of how I think that they've treated me in the past and also how, in my mind, that they seem to be on a daily basis. I believe that they are nice when it suits them. I think that summarises their personality in one sentence, rather unfortunately more than I might have recently let on. So, with that being said, I think um, maybe I would be better off moving out to an area that I deem more pleasant. And also so I wouldn't talk to them as often, because I definitely don't want to do that. And I've thought about them dying. I've thought about them dying, which is relevant to the last sentence, because that would be a time which, if... I don't die before them in which I would not be able to speak to them and what would have happened between me and my parents would be that and it would be set in stone and it would not be able to change between me and my parents between, in terms of how I would have interacted with them and in terms of how I would be able to interact with them even if I'd want to go to their funeral that is and if I'd want to go to their grave that is and I've had quite a few thoughts of not wanting to do so because of how I think that 
they've treated me in the past and how I, I've decided to think about them in the past but in my mind I believe that I'd be making myself out to sound like more of, a, more of a victim than I actually am because I'm definitely not clean I've been very unpleasant in the past and when thinking about my relationship with my parents I would think that and I'd use that as my main defence point to justify my actions and the things that I have said to them by saying or by claiming to myself that I'm not a saint but at least I'm self-aware enough to know that and from the interactions that I've had with my parents during serious conversations or full-blown arguments that definitely could have led to physical violence it seemed as though they in their mind thought that they could not do any wrong and have not done any wrong but from my perspective during those times I beg to differ and with the summary I've given with their personalities in terms of them in my eyes being nice only when it suits them I just don't speak to them I speak if I'm spoken to and that's that that's my modus operandi with them and with my siblings I think it definitely is the nice one and the one that I just rather not speak to because of one time which they, uh, in particular quite recently within this year in which they mocked me about something that was seemingly small but bearing in mind that I don't like how they've spoken to me from pre previous serious conversations and arguments I just rather not be around them either so when I've thought about that when I've thought about the relationship I have with this individual in particular I just think they can rot this is my sibling I'm talking about and although in theory you'd think that because this um, or one might think because this individual is a sibling of mine that you would have a healthy relationship with them unless you've experienced something different and I personally think I just I've had enough for a long time especially with my dad because we had one argument in which we were shouting a lot and I was basically saying fuck you to him but uh, explicitly I was saying forget you but that I was too scared to say fuck you but that's what I really wanted to say after that that was it I was done this happened in November and this was from um, when I came back from doing some professional um, when I came back from my professional endeavours very basically that I definitely would like to continue but anyway we had this argument and I felt so angry and I felt scared as well I noticed I think I still feel scared of him because my heart rate would change I stopped breathing a little bit I breathe a bit more shallowly when I be around him and I just think especially uh, around my mum as well I just would not want to be around them because they talk too much in my opinion I just don't want to hear their voice but if they die before me I might think differently and I might wish they'd rather be here with me but at least with the relationship that I have now while they're still alive and well enough I'd rather not be around them but I could definitely understand why I think otherwise um, specifically out of stress because there's a death in my life that I don't think I've completely recovered from as well. They didn't teach me how, about how to deal with grief, but I haven't had a loss in my life. That was, uh, this is years ago. But in my life, death has been a part of my life. Well before I was born, because of my grandparents being dead before I was born, at least for the most part anyway. So, death was normal and it was part of my life and although that's the case I didn't think uh, I have experienced the loss before before this individual in particular passing away and actually this um, this was something on my mind during that time when I went to this self-improvement event this self-improvement event which I said 
if I remember correctly, um, also does therapy services, which I have no problem with um, prices wise anyway. But maybe I could do some because there's quite a bit of grief that I don't think I've yet completely uncovered. I've tried crying about this death, but I just, the tears just not have not come out. And this has been for years now, a few years now. I've tried crying about it, but those tears just don't come. I think I might cry on the inside. And to be honest, now that I think about it, I even wanted to sit up at the idea of this because I think I've made a realization. This might actually be a part of why I'd seemingly be so negative on a daily basis because of such things in the back of my mind piling up. It'd be similar to uh, a computer having a lot of background processes happening and also quite a few processes happening in the foreground, which would then explain why the computer would be running so slow. And maybe to relate this analogy back to my life, perhaps, maybe I'd be partially withdrawn from my life because of not making a, a healthy recovery from that death. Maybe. And maybe in a year's time, I'll actually say that I have. Uh, I have taken therapy. There are a whole load of goals that I've got in mind. But I want to change the subject. One of those goals I have in mind is to do with travel. And I want this to be the first year in my life ever, at least as a conscious individual, in which I've traveled, particularly to a different country. Family, family and I did when I was very young, but I don't recall, I don't have any memory of that event happening from my perspective so I'd say in theory especially during school times that I essentially have never left the country I've never left 